Hey WNT, welcome to our last normal WNT of the semester. We're so excited that you have come and joined us on YouTube and Zoom again. I know that um, we're all tired of this way of meeting. We'd rather be together in person. We'd rather be hanging out. Um, but I'm glad that you've come to this space because we just want to continue to be a community during this time. We know that the church isn't about a building, um, but it's about people and about relationships um, with each other and with God and um, pointing each other towards um, towards what faith in Jesus looks like during this time. And so we just want to welcome you to this space. We hope that you um, encounter community tonight, that you feel welcome in this time, that you feel like small groups is a place you can belong. We want you to know that you belong here no matter where you're at in your faith, but we want to be about um, having spiritual conversations around what does it look like to be a follower of Jesus? What does it look like to reorient our lives around who he's called us to be? And, um, and so that's what we're doing tonight. And you're going to get to hear from Taylor here in a second. And Taylor is wrapping up our series on, uh, on what it looks like to share our faith. We're calling it the gospel cannot be quarantined because even though we're really limited in the ways that we can interact with people in this space, we believe that the gospel can go out, that the good news of Jesus can go out. And so we want to be intentional to pray for people like we talked about two weeks ago. They would come to know Jesus, that Jesus would be moving and working in their lives and drawing him. Uh, drawing them to himself. And then we want to be caring for people in an intentional way that embodies the gospel. We want to embody the love of Jesus for others so that they might understand the love of God for them. And then tonight, Taylor's going to talk about how we can have intentional conversations where we actually share the gospel. So we pray for others, we care for them intentionally, and then we actually share the gospel with them. We share that message. We have spiritual conversations and they're able to share about the work of God. And so um, I'm hoping that tonight is just really helpful for you, that it gives you some ideas, um, some tools in your toolbox of how you can have spiritual conversations with friends, with family, with coworkers, um, with people around you that you love and care about. So welcome to this space. Welcome to the last normal WNT of the semester. We're glad you're here and we're excited to wrap up the semester with this teaching and then to celebrate next week as we celebrate the end of the school year, the seniors, um, and just get to reflect on what God's been doing during this time. So love you guys, and I'll see you after for a few announcements. Peace out. All right, guys, happy Wednesday. Today's our last day in our series, You Can't Quarantine the Gospel. Our first week, uh, we talked about how we can spread the gospel uh, or the good news of Jesus Christ uh, to those around us by praying for people. Uh, to know Jesus and for God to accomplish his purposes on earth. Uh, Lindsay did a great job last week of sharing how we can spread the gospel by of Jesus by caring for our friends and family. And tonight we're wrapping up our series by talking about how we can spread the gospel by sharing it. I bet some of you are intimidated by this topic. Uh, you may feel like you just don't know what to say or maybe you're afraid to share your faith because you're afraid of being rejected or judged by your friends, um, or maybe you feel like you just don't you don't need to share and you just need to live a life uh, with good morals, uh, and that's enough. But I'm excited to, to be able to talk to you guys tonight about one of my favorite topics, uh, which is evangelism. Uh, to be honest with you guys, though, I used to really dislike sharing my faith with people. Um, I was really quiet in high school, and I felt like I might lose uh, whatever friends I did have and if I talked to them about Jesus. Um, I hoped that I could just live a good moral life, and that would be enough. And maybe even my friends would come up to me and start asking me questions about, uh, about Jesus and accept Jesus just because of how they saw me live. Um, and yeah, I mean, that is important, uh, it's, but really it's not enough. I, I came head to head with uh, the reality that it's it's not just a suggestion to share our faith. It's uh, Jesus actually commands us in Matthew twenty eight nineteen to go and make disciples. It's actually pretty obvious uh, why he says that if you think about it. Uh, Romans ten thirteen through fourteen says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how will, are they to believe in him in whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? You have to, to, you have to tell your friends about Jesus for them to know and believe in Jesus. And really, guys, my biggest regret from high school is that I did not share my faith with my friends more. 
I started talking or taking that command seriously uh, when I got to CU Boulder uh, for college, and it it made my faith so much deeper and stronger. Um, because when you share your faith and what you believe with others, you're challenged to really think for yourself about what you believe and to ask hard questions that deepen your understanding of Scripture, and you get to see God change hearts and lives, and it's, it's truly amazing. Um, yeah, 2 Corinthians 5 says that we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, it's a message that brings real life and hope into people's lives. Uh, and to be honest, also, not everyone is going to want to hear it. That's just the reality. But um, boy, when someone does hear it, for them and for, for you, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Uh, to see a life transformed and the new hope of the gospel fill someone's heart, it's its amazing. So, now if you, if you feel like you just don't know what to say, um, I want to encourage you with some truth about God. <laughs> God actually loves to use people like you. When God told Moses uh, in Exodus to free the Israelites from slavery from Egypt, uh, Moses' response was that he was slow of speech and tongue. He said that in Exodus 4, uh, which basically means that he was a terrible speaker. But God chose that man to lead his people. Uh, and then when Jesus chose his 12 disciples, he picked ordinary people. Um, yeah, he picked like fishermen and tax collectors. And actually most of the 12 disciples were teenagers. Uh, Acts says that they were uneducated and ordinary men or common men. The only remarkable thing, thing about them is that they had been with Jesus. Jesus also picked Paul, the apostle, to be an incredible missionary who he ended up re writing half of the letters that make up the New Testament. Um, but even, uh, yeah, Paul even says about himself that he was a terrible speaker. Um, yeah, and, and I relate a lot to these people. It's encouraging to me because I, I myself am a terrible speaker. I know that. Um, but the truth is that God gave us his Holy Spirit to speak and work through us. Jesus' power is made perfect in our weakness because when we share our faith, despite how much we butcher the gospel and stumble over our words, the Holy Spirit will speak through us and work in the heart of those that we're speaking to. So with all that said, I just want to share a bit about how we can actually share our faith. I want to start with saying that there's no right way of sharing the gospel. There's a million different ways you can do it. Um, so imagine you have a toolbox and you have a bunch of tools, right? So now imagine, yeah, you can use a flathead screwdriver. If you have a nail in the wall, you can use a flathead to, to rip it out of the wall. Like you can jam it in there and um, work it out, but a hammer would work much better. It's actually designed to remove nails. Um, yeah, sharing the gospel is the same way. You have a bunch of different ways in which you can share the gospel, and you have a, different, a bunch of different tools and styles and methods for sharing your faith, uh, and they'll all probably work fine, uh, but it's up to you to decide which tool works best for you in your context, or which method would be most helpful to the your friend that you're sharing with to understand the gospel. So uh, I'm just going to share with you guys three methods uh, that I found helpful in my own faith, and they're pretty general and um, generally useful and helpful. Um, the first way I want to encourage you guys is to actually use the Life in Six Words app that we've been talking about. If you haven't downloaded that yet, you should. It's actually really helpful. Um, it's great for sharing the gospel either in person or you can send an audio story. You can record yourself sharing the gospel. Um, it provides a step-by-step -step explanation of the story of the Bible and humanity and what Jesus did for us. And I'll pull it up on the screen right now. Uh, it, Yeah, it's just a great way to promote conversation about Jesus. The way the app explains the gospel is actually with an acronym, gospel. It's pretty easy to remember. <laughs> uh, it starts with G. It says, God created us to be with him. O, our sins separate us from God. S, sins cannot be removed by good deeds. P, 
paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. E. Everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. L. Life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. Yeah, this app is simple and easy to use. And in each little letter section page thing, they have a verse associated with each one. And that can you can read that with your friends to help them understand how scripture actually speaks to that statement. Um, yeah, so that's the first way. The second way, uh, which is my personal favorite, is that you can uh, share the gospel by sharing your own story. Uh, this is generally called your testimony, which is the story of how you came to faith in Jesus. It's important for you guys to be able to write out your own personal testimony not for the purpose of memorizing and sharing it verbatim, uh, but because it helps you to put into words some of the important and interesting details of your own relationship with Christ. Our individual stories are some of the most powerful evangelism tools, really, because they are so deeply unique to us. Uh, the choice of the right words, the flow of your story, and knowing how to begin and end it are all important. Um, yeah, 1 Peter 3.15 actually says that we should always be prepared to make offense to anyone who asks for a reason, you for a reason for the hope that is in you, uh, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Yeah, it's, it's so important to have your own story of how you became a Christian um, and have that, you can practice that, you can just have it ready for when people ask um, because it's, it's super effective. Um, there's actually a really cool example of this in the New Testament. It's Acts 26, and the Apostle Paul actually shares his own testimony of how uh, he accepted Christ, and uh, there's actually a really helpful guide for writing your own testimony that you can see in Acts 26. Uh, he begins with sharing his life before Jesus, then he shares how and why he accepted Jesus, uh, and then shares about his life after accepting Jesus. And that's the structure I want to encourage you guys with. It's before, how, and why, and after. We're actually going to practice this in small groups in a little bit, but first we're, we're going to talk about the third method for sharing the gospel, which is reading the Bible with your friends. Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is living and active, which means that God's word can transform your friend's heart and God can reveal himself to them through the Bible. The Bible is living and active, guys. I think you'll be surprised, actually, by how eager your friends will be to read the Bible with you. Um, yeah, I've actually never had a friend that I've asked if they want to read the Bible with me. I've never had a friend say no. Um, yeah, in my experience, a lot of people want to read it and are actually really excited about having a space where they can ask questions and discuss them by reading the Bible with a Christian. So uh, with that in mind, I want to suggest six tips for you guys while reading the Bible with your friends. Uh, the first is to set the atmosphere. Choose a comfortable, normal meeting space like a home or a coffee shop. And a quick note is that songs and prayers and um, religious language or Christianese as we like to call it is it's not part of this type of Bible discussion, so just keep it simple. Um, the second tip I have for you guys is to keep the group small. Uh, participants can number from 2 to 10 at the very most, but if it gets bigger than that, it's hard to have real genuine uh, and good conversation. Number three is timing. Um, yeah, just don't be late and don't go over time. You know, uh, stop talking when people stop before people stop listening. Um, yeah, the schedule should be predictable so that people can plan around it, plan accordingly. Uh, the fourth tip I have for you guys is to stick with the Bible, even if it's unfamiliar to people. Explain to them that there are two parts. Uh, there's the Old Testament and the New Testament, and explain the numbering of the chapters and verses. Um, yeah, don't assume that people have prior knowledge going into that. Uh, the fifth tip I have for you guys is subject matter. There are several good options at starting points, um, but all roads really lead back to the, the single question, who is Jesus? 
help people get a fresh look at Jesus. At And uh, I, I think the Gospel of John is a great book to start with for that. Number six is uh, prepare for a session with questions that help probe the text. Come with questions. Uh, and then encourage the people you're reading with to ask questions. Come with questions. Um, keep sessions interactive. And yeah, encourage them to read ahead, but don't expect them to actually do that. <laughs> um, create an environment which questions can flourish. And yeah, everyone's going to be wondering, is it safe for me to ask my real questions around here? And your job is to make sure that it is. So that was a lot. Um, but really, we're going to focus on one thing tonight, and that's sharing your own testimony. Uh, I really believe that sharing your faith is one of the greatest things uh, that you can do for your own faith and also for the life of your friends. After all, why would you want to withhold a gift as good as Jesus from them? So we're going to give you guys some space in small groups uh, to actually write out your testimony and share it with each other, practice with each other. Yeah, view it as practice time. Um, if you haven't accepted Jesus, though, uh, I don't want you to feel awkward or feel pressured uh, to make something up. If you have questions still, that's totally fine, and you can be honest about that. Um, yeah, just view this time as a chance to write out your story so far uh, and be honest about what you believe and write out the questions that you still have. Um, yeah, but I'm really excited to do this with you guys. We'll have announcements for you real quick, and then we'll see you in small groups. All right, WNT, I hope you guys enjoyed Taylor's message. I know I did. I'm so challenged to be um, sharing the gospel with people in my everyday life and to be having spiritual conversations with people and just feel like, man, this has been a great series of just inspiring me and reminding me that this is a priority in my life and that I want to be doing this and committed to asking God for opportunities to share my faith. And so I pray that it's the same for you. And um, if this uh, if this has just inspired you, or even if it hasn't inspired you, but you wish that it had, I encourage you, please go download Life in Six Words. It's an app, and we've been talking about it the last couple of weeks, but it'll help you just continue to process through who are some people in my life that I want to intentionally pray for, that I want to care for, and embody the gospel to, people that I want to actually share the gospel with in my word and conversation with them. And um, and it'll prompt you and it'll give you ideas of different ways that you can do that. And you can add people to your your circle of people that you want to be sharing the gospel with and, and just um, be prompted of intentional ways that you can do that. So I'd encourage you to download that. It's Life in Six Words and it'll just help you um, understand the gospel better for yourself and be able to start sharing that with others. Uh, so that that's the first thing. Now guys, my second announcement, I have some sad news for you. You might have already seen this come through in emails um, over this last weekend, but we have decided that we're gonna have to cancel all of our summer trips. I'm sure many of you guys knew that this was coming and I'm, I'm super sad to have to make it official, but it's also sort of just like, I wanted you guys to know what to expect. I didn't want you to have to keep your hopes up for something that was unlikely to happen and so, we have decided to cancel those trips, um, but we're gonna be really just brainstorming and thinking about what are some ways that we could just have a blast together this summer in different ways than we might be used to doing that. One thing that I do know about this summer is that we are gonna be meeting together, whether that's online in small groups or all back together um, as a community, we are gonna be meeting and we're meeting starting June 3rd and um, we're gonna be meeting uh, in some form or fashion and so I, I'm just looking forward to being together again after taking just two weeks off at the end of May. Just give you guys a little break. I know you're all zoomed out and um, ready for just a break from screens and to just kind of decompress after the semester. So we're going to miss you but we hope you enjoy the end of your school year and just a few weeks of just being, um, being off maybe of tech for the first time in a while, not having anything that you have to do on Zoom. So we'll see you guys back together and we'll let you know what that's going to look like for June 3rd, which is when we kick off. So we'll see you guys then. And uh, I love you guys. And I hope that you, um, that you enjoyed tonight, that you have great conversations in small groups. 
and we'll see you guys back on Zoom and next week for um, our awesome celebration night. We're going to celebrate seniors. We're going to celebrate what God's been doing this year um, in your lives and just kind of look back and reflect and just praise God and, and share some stories about what he's been doing in our lives. So I'm excited to be together again. See you guys back on Zoom and see you next week. Bye.